And we continue our community connection this evening, live from Ybor City. Many people call the neighborhoods that surround this historic business district home. And that drives tourists here is what drives homeowners here. The houses are eclectic, they're close to great businesses like this one here, the J.C. Newman Cigar Company here. But as we've mentioned, crime and problems also affect them as well. It's why some have started neighborhood watch groups. In Ybor Heights, neighbors there have relaunched their group during the pandemic. And that's where we find our 10 of us gate, Jennifer Titus, who shows us how the group is already creating change. Yeah, it was the neighborhood watch group that reported this tree had fallen down on top of a swing set that was here just days ago. It's been removed. Just add that to one of the items that the neighborhood watch group has reported to city officials, but they tell me there's still a long way to go here in this neighborhood. Along Nebraska Avenue sits Burrell Park, an open space that surrounds Ebor Heights. There's about 700 households. A neighborhood Mimi Martinez calls home. You have a lot of humble, hardworking people here who love it and they take a lot of pride. But if you look at Burrell Park again, it's been fenced off. It's summer break and there's not a kid in sight. How long has it been since kids have played at that playground? Oh, that's probably been at least two years. The swing set destroyed days ago by a falling tree. It's a shame because you have these beautiful covered trees and we can't really use it because it, it's, it, it wasn't safe for a long time. And that's just the beginning of the issue, she says, in Burrell Park. And then we have hotels yes. right across yes. the street. And it's, do those hotels cause problems? Well, they're quiet. So yeah. they're, you know, yeah. they're quiet, but I mean, we, we know it's a problem. <laughs> it's a daily rate of $50. Yeah. I mean, night. we know, and it yeah. advertises adult movies. The foot traffic coming from Nebraska Avenue, she says, leaves many loitering in the park. And there has been issues here. There has been violence. There was someone who was killed here. They've got the memorial set up over there. Um, so it has been on our radar for a long time. It's why Mimi says neighbors came together to revamp the neighborhood watch group. For years, the group was not active, but now it's going strong. We have a large amount of people who are active. They've reported everything to city officials from the down tree to loitering. And you can see the needles and you can see the drug bags all over the street and the cans of beer. And again, the city has been cleaning to squatters taking over vacant lots. We had a fire here. It was on East James Street. That was about a week ago. OK, um, it's a vacant home. And we don't know what the cause is, but the house did catch on fire. The city has also added new signs and bollards around the park perimeters after the group sent in photos of feed ins. The city ordinance says that if you have any kind of event with 50 or more people, you have to get a permit. This church is now a derelict property. Thad Baraday runs the neighborhood watch group in VM Ebor. It borders Ebor Heights and Burrell Park. There's a lot of history and legacy. Like Martinez, he says a big issue is the Nebraska corridor pushing foot traffic from downtown to this area. There are wonderful ministries that operate, including my ministry, up and down uh, this corridor, but many of them by residents are viewed to attract homelessness. And Burrell Park has now become an area where the homelessness community is starting to congregate um, as they've been moved out of other parts of the neighborhood. So it really is a challenge because with the blight of homelessness in our community, there's often no place for our homeless neighbors to go. They both agree. Safety and security is always the number one priority. That the neighborhood watch group has been a solution. There are no eyes on the street because it's all businesses. So after dark, when the business is closed, there's no one to call in and report anything. That's so, where you guys come in. Yes. To help improve the neighborhoods they call home. The people who live here, they want to live here. And they want it to be safe and they want it to grow, to improve for the people who live here. The people who live here, they want the current people who have been here to stay here. And again, this playground here has been fenced up for two years and it's just the start of summer. You can see why so many families in this neighborhood hope that this item is the next one checked off their list. In Ebor Heights tonight, Jennifer Titus, 10 Investigates.
All right, thanks, Jen. Unfortunately, the city of Tampa got back to us about the park, and they say they are waiting right now on a certain part for the playground. They say and there's no definite timeline when the park will be back open. We'll keep you posted meantime. They do tell us, though, that they are evaluating Burrell Park overall and will be looking for community feedback. The police department also tells us they've had 30 active events in the neighborhood this month, from trespassing incidents to community roll calls. Anyone, by the way, can always request a front porch roll call to be held in their area, on their block, or even at their home to meet the officers who patrol their neighborhoods and learn how they can help with crime reduction and quality of life concerns in their immediate area.